Ripple me this, riddle me that. You better batten down the hatches. The thieves are coming up to bat. Hey folks, Sam, I am here. And in this episode, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to talk about how you can secure your digital assets, give you some things to think about. You know, all I hear from the YouTube bloggers is, oh, buy a Ledger Nano. Here's my affiliate link. You know, buy this and that, that's it. They never talk about anything beyond that. And really, the truth is, that's the first step of things that you need to be doing to secure your digital assets and make sure that you're safe today and into the future. And so hardware wallets are, like I said, the first step, but not the last step. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of people get off. Uh, but the fact is, if you want to be the bank, you get to be the bank security as well. So if you're not going to hire armed guards to stand outside your house and follow you around 24 seven, then you need to take some other appropriate measures. And so that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Um, you know, the uh, Ledger Nano right here is the kind of the gold standard when it comes to backing up a lot of different cryptos. They probably have the, the greatest number of coins that they will back up. Uh, but there are others out there. Trezor is one. Cassie's a new one, I think, that I haven't heard of before, but I saw on Amazon when I was kind of looking through researching for this. Um, so, you know, get whatever you want. Just make sure that it stores the coins that you actually want to put on the ledger. And a lot of times I talk about XRP, but this uh, episode, it really applies to any crypto across the board because these are principles that you need to think about and keep in mind when it comes to keeping your, your wealth safe, essentially. A lot of it goes, goes to private key management. Once you've got uh, your backup made and you've got that seed word list, your, that, that is your private key. It's a representation of your private key. What do you do with that? How do you secure it? You know, what kind of steps do you need to take? And I'm going to give you some, you know, very real and what should be very sobering uh, examples of what have happened to people who have not taken this seriously. So let's jump in here. Um, okay, so one of the very first things that I hear all the time is, oh, you need to order the Ledger Nano from the factory, from uh, Ledger directly. It ships over from, fa from uh, France. The people who are doing that are using an affiliate link and they say anywhere else it's not safe and they've been hacked and this and that. And I'm calling FUD on that. That is ridiculous. Uh, the, I, I've looked into it quite a bit. I've ordered mine off Amazon. I've had zero problems. And I think this is kind of where it comes from. Uh, this is a review. Somebody claiming that these little spots right here, I mean, mine doesn't have them, but theirs did when they got it. They're claiming, oh, somebody's clearly taking this out. Those are fingerprints. They don't look like fingerprints. Uh, so therefore, my ledger has been hacked and this and that. Um, just not true. I mean, my best guess is this is metal. These things go on an airplane uh, and they're going to condensate a little bit. And that may be what that is. Maybe it was just something from the factory. But to suggest that it's hacked is kind of ridiculous. Now, there is a way to verify this. Ledger has a web page right here where you can do a hardware integrity check. Uh, they also give you for each version of the wallet, you can open it up by pulling this little metal piece off and pulling the plastic cover off to where you can see the actual circuit board. And if that has been modified, if it doesn't look like this picture, then yes, it has been hacked. But as far as I know, there are no cases of that. Uh, they also give you some little scripts that you can use to verify the key, uh, the hardware key, the, the basically, you know, just make sure it's as the factory sent it out the door. And then also the other big thing is when you transfer funds off of the Ledger Nano, I don't know about the others, uh, but it will show you the wallet address on the little LCD screen. It will go scrolling by and you need to compare that with the uh, Ledger Live software where they're showing you here's the wallet we're transferring from or and so forth. So if you do that, you should be fine. And, you know, I, I don't have any problem with people that want to, you know, if you want to support one of the other YouTubers that are out there using affiliate links, I think they get 10 bucks or something. It's going to take longer to ship the ledgers to you from France. You know, Amazon, you can get them two days on Amazon Prime. Uh, whatever you want to do. I don't have a problem with anyone doing that. It's a good way to support bloggers that you appreciate and, and like the content that they put out. But at the same time, I don't want to perpetuate this myth that 
oh, it's not safe to order them anywhere else, when really it is. Um, there are some hacks. Now, one of, the, one of the scams is if somebody gets a hold of it and they, they give you these little cards right here to write your seed word list down on, I do not suggest that you use these, but what has happened is some criminals will get a hold of the ledger, they'll go through the setup process, and they will give you a card like this that's professionally printed, looks probably just like this, and it's already got the seed word set up, and this is already set up. And what they, they're hoping that you will do is transfer your crypto onto the ledger, and they have a copy of this, and down the road sometime they'll come in and clean you out. So if you're, you have to go through the setup process, and I'm going to talk about that, but if you ever get one that's, that's printed out like this, don't use it, period. Um, okay, let's see here. So certain tools that you're going to need to do this and to do it properly. Uh, the first one is a seed key worksheet. And I mentioned don't use this. The reason I don't like this is because it's so small. And you have to write very tiny letters. And it's easy to make a mistake. What I recommend is that you make a worksheet like this in Word. If I can get it to you read. This is my world domination account. I was going to put a trillion XRP on here, but I decided to go really big and put 110 billion on. But you can see I've laid it out with the numbers, all 24. I've written the words from the BIP39 seed word list, which is this right here. It's basically a way to represent numbers as words so that you can have this mnemonic instead of just a numerical long string of numbers a little easier to to work with for us humans um, <clears throat> and basically you can also see I've written these out in big block letters and the other thing this is the titanium seed word plate that I use what you'll notice is these two are laid out exactly the same so there's 12 on one side, 12 on the other, same on my worksheet, 12 and 12. And that is to minimize mistakes, because if you make a mistake transferring these words over to here, you can lose your crypto. And I've actually, uh, I'll tell you about it later, but I've made one of those mistakes, and I currently have over 10,000 XRP locked up that I can't access right now. I, I think I know where the mistake is. I'll be able to figure it out, but for now, it could be lost. So don't make that mistake. Okay, uh, the other thing you're gonna need is a punch set like this. These are about 13 bucks. This one has letters and numbers. Some people don't use the seed word list. They translate it into something else to make it kind of a coded list. You can do that as well. But these are just little pieces of steel. I don't know if you can see that, but they have a letter on the bottom. And then you're going to need, uh, let's see, a jeweler's plate as well. This is the one I bought. It was, it's right there on the screen, about 16 bucks. This is a four by four by three quarters, a little heavier. My daughter, it had a little flap thing. It was in a plastic bag. She held it up in the car and it smacked her in the face. So they're heavy, be careful with them. Uh, and essentially, oh yeah. And then these are the seed word plates. Now I like this one. It comes with two in a pack like that. It's designed so that you use these little uh, plastic screws to go through these two holes in the middle to secure them together and then you use stickers uh, here let's actually bring this up here so you can take a look and there there they are sandwiched together and there they are with the with the sticker on it now I don't suggest you do this uh, one thing you're storing two seed plates together so if somebody was able to steal this and get a hold of it, you've now lost both wallets instead of one. Uh, what I use is this Plasti Dip. This is a plastic rubber spray paint that you can spray this. It will completely coat it and cover up the indentation so it's unreadable. And then whenever you need to access this, you peel it off. It takes several hours to put on. You have to wait 30 minutes between coats. You can get this in different colors. Uh, I like black because it just... You know, you spray paint this and it looks like a piece of black plastic. Now, there are uh, other ones. I like this one as well. This one's 30 bucks for one of them. These are 20 for two. So this is a $10 plate. Whereas this one, to do two or three of these would be 30, would be 60 or $90. It adds up. But what you can do with this one is 
you put the seed words into essentially thirds, and then you can break those pieces up. So a good idea might be to distribute those to three different, between three people, yourself and maybe two others, so that nobody has all of the words to restore it. Uh, and what you could also do, though, is fill this out into thirds. So you've got two-thirds here, two-thirds here, and two-thirds here. And you give those to, you keep one, you give those to two other people that you trust. That way no one person will have the whole key, but you'd have to get two people together. And then the reason I say do it into thirds, because if one of those persons dies or drops off the face of the earth or loses it, you don't lose your, your funds, essentially. You still have that other person that's going to have the, the other two-thirds or the other third that you need, and you'll be able to do that. So you can do it with these for 30 bucks or these for 60 um, Something to consider. Okay, and then you will also need, let's see, a five-pound hammer or two-and-a-half-pound hammer will work fine. I think you can get this one at Walmart. Any big box store, Home Depot, or Lowe's would have it as well. Uh, and essentially what you're going to do is use your jeweler's plate. You're going to put this down here, and you're going to use your stamp to set it on the in the right word with the right letter, and then you, you hit it on the top with the hammer one time, makes an indention, and then you go through, repeat, rinse and repeat over and over. It takes a couple hours to uh, fill one of these out. It's a slow and long process. I tried to do it on concrete. It was not nearly level enough. That's when I bought this. It's well worth it to produce a good looking seed plate. Okay. And then the last thing you're gonna need is a lighter because when we're done, you're gonna set fire to this list. So we'll go through that in a little more detail here. Uh, let's talk about the process. Now, this is not a how-to of, I'm not gonna walk you through the setup. I'm not gonna do it. There's plenty of videos out there. Go watch one of them if you don't know how to use your Ledger Nano. They're great for teaching you the, the basics of it. But essentially, what you're gonna do is turn this on and either initialize or reset it. It's gonna walk you through a seed word list. And again, instead of using this little tiny card, Use this great big one. Write your letters out in big block letters so that they're easy to read. Please don't steal my 110 billion XRP. Um, and then once you've finished, the Nano is going to then walk you back through, and you're going to have to re-enter all these words to verify them. Once you've done that, this thing's set up and good to go. Take it, set it aside. Then what you're going to do is take this sheet and this, and transfer the words over from here to here. Now the fastest way I've done this is to actually take one word at a time, pull all the letters. If it's uh, host, you take out the four letters that you need like this. I would line them up so that they spell out host, lay them down, and then I pick up one, stamp it, put it down, pick up the next one, stamp it, put it down, next one, stamp it, put it down, next one, stamp it, put it down. The fastest way to go, then you put them all back, and then you pull the next word on the list, and you just keep going that way. At first, I did it one letter at a time, and it just is a lot slower that way. So, you go through all there, all of that, and then I use this space right here on the bottom to actually write the account description of who's, whose wallet this is, or what it's for, or whatever, uh, to record that, okay? Um, and then what you're going to do is go back to the Ledger Nano, initialize it, enter your pen, all that stuff, and you're going to transfer a small amount, like 20, 25 XRP or, or a small portion of Bitcoin or whatever you're backing up onto the Ledger Nano, and then you're going to reset it and wipe it out, and then you're going to take not this, but this, because... Once you burn this, it's gone, and all you're going to have is this. That's the mistake that I made, is I had one word that got transferred over wrong. I think I know which one it is, and I'll be able to figure it out. But in the meantime, if you don't do this right, and you don't double-check this and really spend a lot of time making sure you've copied every word over correctly, it could be a very costly mistake. Okay? So you reset this, and then you're going to restore a wallet. You restore from your seed word list that you've punched out onto the metal plate. And once you bring that back and you've 
uh, you see that, yes, you do have the 20 or 25 XRP or whatever it is you transferred over to the Ledger Nano, and it's going to cost you a little bit to do that. That's just the only way to do it safe. Take the time to do that. Um, then you take this outside, fold it up, set fire to it with a torch, and crumble the ashes. You do not want multiple lists running around or this going in the trash can and somebody finding it. Anybody who has this list right here can steal all 110 billion of your XRP or whatever it is you're storing. And same goes for this. This is the private key that will let anyone who has it access your wallet, okay? So you need to really understand that. But once you've done that, once you've set it up, recorded your key, transferred it over, uh, moved some funds in, reset your ledger, restored from your titanium seed word plate, and, and verified that the funds are there, you can move the rest in, and then, again, burn this, okay? Uh, and then you're good to go. Now, from there, there's other things you need to consider, okay? Um, like I said, this, this is made to go together and use these little rivet-looking plastic screws to sit in the hole right there and tie them together. But if you've gone to the trouble to not put all your eggs in one basket, why would you take and put these together and then store them in the exact same place. If, some, if a thief or somebody you don't want getting a hold of your crypto gets a hold of this, well, guess what? They've got both of your accounts instead of one. Uh, that's another thing I should mention. Um, once you've gone through that process where you've, you've backed this up, you've verified it, you've reset this and reloaded it, you can then reset this again and go through the whole process and set up another one of these without buying another ledger. Now, you'll only be able to access the funds at the same time. You know, if you have five accounts, you won't be able to access any more than one at a time if all you have is one Ledger Nano. But <clears throat> you can go through and restore the key as many, you know, of any account that you have and then move those, those uh, digital assets off the Ledger uh, just by going through the reset process. A little more tedious, but these are 100 bucks. So, you know, you can do one and set up two, five, 10, 50 accounts. You got to have 20 XRP minimum in those. And I don't know what the reserve is on other ones. I don't think there is one, but uh, something to consider as well. So kind of think about it in terms of how much would you be willing to lose? If somebody does a home invasion and, and empties out your ledger, do you want to lose everything because you have it in one account or would you rather have it in two or five or ten or whatever it is for you whatever that number is how much risk do you want to take by keeping all your eggs in one basket it's a lot of work it, you know it takes hours to go through this process and set one of these up but well worth it down the road you know you are the bank if you're storing your crypto at home on one of these you need to take security very very seriously and here's why um, oh well before we get to that so this is an example of a billionaire, Matthew, Matthew Mellon, who was on his way to uh, rehab, had a heart attack and died. Uh, he had 500 million in XRP as one of the early investors and his family cannot find these. So that's the other thing you need to, if you're the only one that knows where this is and something happens to you, it's lost. You need to have you and at least one other person who knows where it is or knows some process that they can go through to find it and restore it and get it to whoever you want to leave it to. Otherwise it can be gone. Okay. So something to consider. And also I wouldn't recommend that that's if you're married and you know, I wouldn't recommend it be your wife because y'all travel in the car all the time together. If y'all both get in a fatal accident, your kids aren't going to have anything. So it needs to be somebody who's preferably geographically separate from you that is holding on to this or knows where it is or whatever, but you need to have contingency plans in place in case something happens to you so that you can restore this and uh, you know get it to your loved ones or whoever you want to have it. Okay, don't be this guy right here. Now, here's a case of a Russian crypto developer, developer who was beaten and robbed of 300 BTC in Moscow. According to his own allegations, he was grabbed off the streets by four men at 10 p.m. in Moscow, put into a Mercedes and beaten while the men drove around the city. 
the men took the U.S. dollars, $20,000. He was just come out of the bank uh, on his way to a trip to uh, India, I believe. So he was getting some cash for that. And they took his iPhones. They took his laptop with access to the 300 BTC worth a little over $3 million today. Now, most of you are not going to carry around a suitcase with $3 million in cash in it, but that's exactly what this guy was doing with his laptop because he didn't think about security. Don't be this guy. Okay. And these stories, unfortunately, are a dime a dozen. You know, here's another one. I was robbed of a million uh, when he refused to hand over his keys. They took a knife and cut his face open. Okay. And then you better, better believe he gave up his key after that. So there's a lot of people that think, oh, well, this is protected by a pen and I just won't give them the pen. Bullshit, you won't. When they start beating you or cutting your face open or threatening to do who knows what to you or your family or your kids, you're going to give it up if, you, if you're if you able to. So we're going to talk some strategies to kind of give you some defense against this. Okay, here's another one. This genius right here posted these pictures of him holding stacks of money wearing his stupid Bitcoin shirt, smiling like an idiot. He doesn't look so good there, does he? Bunch of thugs came in, broke into his apartment, beat the shit out of him. Here's another picture where he's got stacks of money sitting on his desk. Oh, come come rob me, please. And that's exactly what they did. And I can't remember if this is the guy who ended up uh, killing himself, hanged himself after after this happened. Let's see. Yeah, kills himself after having 280K stolen from his flat days after showing off bundles of cash on social media. And I think some of this money wasn't actually his, so extra stupid there. Anyway, so also, don't brag about how much crypto you have. Certainly don't post pictures like this. Be smart about this, because there are bad people out in the world, and you know, robbing people and relieving them of their newfound wealth. There's going to be a lot of crypto millionaires, and this is going to be big business for criminals to start ripping off people's crypto. And if you don't have good strategies in place and you haven't thought ahead, this could be you or your family. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, I think this guy was an exchange, ran an exchange, but 1.8 million. Oh yeah. He was put into a fake Uber and this guy in the, with a gun in the back seat popped up. Uh, right here, cryptocurrency was once worth pennies last year, but soared to over a thousand dollars. Uh, they basically took his keys. Let me see, handed over his, uh, his phone, his apartment keys, and they went to his house. They took his, uh, pass, passphrase. Don't store this at home where criminals can get it. Even if it's in a safe, because guess what? You'll give up the combination if they're putting a gun in your mouth or threatening to slice your face open or actually start doing it. You're not going to hold up to that. You're going to give them what they want. And if you have all your eggs in one basket and you have it all at your house, that's not real smart. Okay. Not real smart. Here's another one. Crypto exchange guy was kidnapped. I don't think anything, they got away with anything here, but those people are targets. A lot, a lot, a lot of problems with doing this at home. So, what are some of the strategies? How can you defend yourself? Um, I think banks actually have a role here. Now, you need to understand before you go and take this and put it in a bank, your bank is not working for you. They don't give a shit about you. If the government shows up with a piece of paper written by a man in a muumuu, they're going to hand over, they're going to drill your safety deposit box and give it to their masters, which is the state that grants them the license to operate and will come in with guns and shut them down if they don't, okay? So don't think if you take and put this in a safety deposit box that it's 100% safe. It is not. The government can come in and take it anytime that they want to or decide to. So, however, this I think is a great place to put it in. A, this is a great item to put in a safety deposit box. And the reason is it's pin code protected. If you try and use it, if you get the pen wrong more than three times, it wipes it out, and then you're going to have to restore from your seed plate. So this in a safety deposit box in the government's hands is not going to be as usable uh, as something like this. And then 
all these scenarios where I just talked about, they're either the guys were carrying the stuff on them or they were sending, breaking into their home or going to their home to steal this stuff with the pen. If this is in a safety deposit box in the bank, nobody else can go get that. It's only you. And you know, it's only during banking hours. So if they do this in the middle of the night, you're going to say, well, I'm sorry, guys. My ledger is at the bank. I can go get it in the morning. Of course, then you can call the police once you're in the bank and it's safe. So there's that, that gives you a very high level of safety and security, not keeping this at home. And so what I would, re- what, what I would recommend, or I think one great strategy is you have this, you go in once a month, once a week, or randomly is even better so that you don't have a routine and you bring in a laptop that's got internet connection. A lot of these bigger banks will have uh, conference rooms where you can use, you can go plug in and you transfer off of your Ledger Nano into, you know, into an exchange and into fiat and eventually into the bank account. Um, I would also recommend that you have a wallet on your cell phone and you use that to keep a small amount of crypto. Uh, So you top that off. And then I think a lot of us will end up having like the Wirex uh, crypto cards where you deposit XRP and then you spend in fiat wherever you go, where anywhere that takes Visa or MasterCard. Uh, so you top all those things off you, without ever leaving the bank. You take this, you put it back in the safety deposit box and you leave. And that way, if somebody robs you, like in any of these scenarios, you would give them this, you would give them the credit card, which you can cancel later. And, you know, if you have uh, cash on you, they're going to get that, whatever. But they're not running away with everything that you've got. Most of these people put all their eggs in one basket and they got cleaned out. So be smart about this. Think about these scenarios. There's a lot of threats out there and I'm just giving you a few of them. But these are things that you absolutely need to think about and consider. Now, custody solutions are also becoming big. Um, These are people who are going to be hiring security experts who have thought through a lot of these scenarios for long-term storage of really high amounts. That's a good way to go. But again, they're going to be subject to the state telling them what to do. So you need to sort of consider that risk when you go, when anybody but you is holding on to your crypto. Okay. If they're government licensed, governments can tell them what to do. And that means if they come and say, hand over the the private keys, that's what they're going to do. Okay, so one more example of what not to do. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not picking on this kid. I'm going to ta- tell you a story about Alex Cobb. I'm using him as an example of what not to do with the hopes that I'm sure this will get back to him uh, and he can make changes. But there was one of his live streams where he was drinking in a cup and he spilt his cup and it almost got and got all over his Ledger Nano. And he was talking about that the other day or the next day saying, oh, this was safe though. And uh, so he basically just let the internet know that he keeps his Ledger Nano right here on the desk next to his computer. And he said, but my private key was fine. It's uh, and he looks over to the right and down. So he just signaled to everybody on the internet that A, he keeps his ledger right next to his computer and B, his private key is probably written down on a piece of paper that if your house ever burns down, poof, there goes your wealth. If you ever get a flood and this paper becomes unreadable, poof, there goes your wealth. This thing you could bury in the dirt and 50 years later, it would be fine. Okay, so that's one of the reasons you need to spend the money to use this instead of a piece of paper. It's just not as safe. Um, And you also don't wanna telegraph this stuff. You know, I, a few days later, this was a few months ago, a couple months ago that he said this. And then I, I was back on his stream a couple days after that. And he talked about, oh, well, my crypto is safe because I've got the pen number and I just won't give it to him. One final story here. Four mass robbers have broken into the house of cryptocurrency trader in Oxfordshire and forced him to transfer all of his Bitcoins to them at gunpoint. I'm sure this guy had everything on a pen code protected device too and you can see how much that mattered you know the criminals don't care they will hurt you they will destroy your life they will kill you to get what they want especially when when we start talking about millions and millions of dollars so i hope this gave you some things to think about you know be smart about this really consider 
putting some geographical distance between you and your keys. You know, you can also put them in uh, like time lock safes where they won't open for 12, 24 hours, 48 hours, something like that. It's locked away so that if you ever have to get to it, well, you can't. But, uh, you know, it provides you an additional level of security. The more you can do to stretch out the time that some potential kidnappers or home invaders or whatever have to sit there and wait around, the, l- the less likely it is to happen or the safer you're likely to be with your, uh, with your digital assets. Okay. So be smart. I'm sure there's other things I haven't considered. If you have a good article or something, uh, and you want to share some more ideas, here's one from a guy named Nick, who is, uh, one of the C plus plus developers at uh, ripple. He wrote an excellent article on security at conferences. I read this. I highly recommend you go read this. I will link to it in the description. If you've got some tips and so forth, put them in the comments. And if I've the, the best ones that I really like, I'll add to the description in this video with a link so that other people can find that as well. Start thinking about this folks. Cause you know, this is, it's going to be big business for leaving people of their crypto who are not smart enough, who didn't think that, Oh gee, maybe bragging about my wealth on social media is not such a good idea. Don't be this guy. Okay. Don't be this guy. Be safe. Uh, secure your crypto think about security and uh, you'll have wealth to pass on to your kids. All right. I'm Sam. I am. We'll catch you next video.